Spartans, welcome back. It's your boy Leonidas back with another video. In today's video, we look at Hikaru Nakamura, where he became America's youngest grandmaster at the time at age 15 in 2003 at the Bermuda Chess Festival. He became an international master two years prior in 2001, and since then, he has been on an historic pace. Currently age 35, he's now been on top of the chess world for the last 20 years, with no slowing down in sight, as he's recently won the Bullet Chess Championship, beating none other than Magnus Carlsen. Like, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Hold the line until then. Peace. Alright, we start with the open Sicilian, which is pretty standard at this point. They play about seven book moves, and this is the position where the book moves end. And now we start to transition into new chess, new territory. Alright, so we have a cameo by my son. Say hi to Apollo, everybody. White has a plethora of options here. White could plant the queen on f3, put the bishop on e2 or d3, or even do a sneaky f4 move here, potentially creating some counterattack in the center for white taking up space, potentially moving these rooks over here, castling uh, at some point queen side, getting all these things over to the king side and creating a shotgun of effect with the queen and the two rooks down this section here. White does one of the top engine moves and puts the queen onto f7. Black responds by connecting the knights going knight bd7. White responds by continuing to develop this bishop out to e2, potentially wanting to castle king side in the future, uh, but also leaving the possibility for queen side castle. Black responds by putting their queen onto c7. So at this point, what you really don't want to do is you don't want to castle queen side because you're going to be looking directly at a veiled queen attack in the future. And if black decides to move this bishop, castle to their king side move these rooks over you are going to be facing uh, two rooks looking down your way these pawns are going to start pushing and it's not going to be a good idea so white responds with the correct move by castling queen side and immediately losing their advantage they went from 0.5 to negative 0.5 on the eval bar now black is completely winning after this castling and they have to fight from a losing position now all right, black responds with the only move that keeps them in a winning position. Any other move besides the move that black plays next will result in white getting the advantage back. And that move, if you guys can pause it right now and you guys can find yourself, is B5. The reason that B5 is the only winning move, say we go back to this and we look at the top other three engine moves, if black is passive whatsoever, say black decides to do something like H5, potentially try to put some pressure on the, the king side over here, all of a sudden we get white coming with a counterattack, completely negating any sort of attack on this square. The square will be covered by three pieces. Black will never get an attack on the queen, the queen side and white will continue just to hold strong even though they did castle into the queen side. White responds with the only move that works, putting the pawn onto the a3 square, thereby keeping black from being able to put their pawn on the b4 square, thereby keeping white's knight planted on this square right here. Black responds by fionketoing the bishop White responds by making a slight inaccuracy, not a horrible mistake, by pinning this knight to uh, nothing, to be honest, but just attacking this knight. Black responds, shuffling the rook over, creating a little battery here. In the future, it could make a deadly attack uh, if things go a little sideways for White's position. White continues to try to develop. This was a inaccuracy or a miss is what chess.com gives it. White wanted to go here, is at least what the computer said, uh, potentially moving these rooks in line of sight of the kings so in case the position opens up, there could be a discover check at some point. All right, so the tactics start to come through for both players at this time. Black decides to defend their knight with their bishop. White slides over potentially in the next few moves. You'll see a discovered attack on this pawn. White doesn't want to commit to taking this pawn quite yet because while the queen won't get trapped, it's a lot of queen moves in a row just for a single pawn. Black ignores that completely and plays the knight move to e5, putting pressure on this bishop. White has to unpin themselves by moving their king over one. Um, Black does not take it right away. Black instead castles, defending this pawn doubly with the knight and the king, defending this pawn now with the king. And it's now given white the green light to go ahead and start pushing these pawns. White wasn't sure if they wanted to push their pawns before because they weren't sure if the king was going to castle at all, to be honest. But now that the king is castled, it is the green light to go ahead and start attacking. 
The tactics continue. Black goes knight fd7. They should have gone knight to h5 because that puts and wins tempo on the queen. Queen would have to move or else it'd be taken. White decides to go for a bishop trade and Gotham, take it away. The idea is to sacrifice the rook. This is a brilliant move because one, it opens up the king position on this B file right here. And in the future, black can move these knights into position, potentially putting an outpost with this knight right here and put a life-threatening attack on the, the king's position here. This as well gives initiative back to black because white has to spend a move capturing that rook, thereby allowing black to continue to move their pieces in a tactical manner, uh, thereby stopping white from doing what they want to do, attacking on this king side over here. So we saw white capture the rook. Uh, black is supposed to put the knight onto c5. They put the knight onto b6, not the end of the world. Uh, but this is a mistake by white. White sees the threat, the looming threat, and realizes it needs to do something. But the computer is a scumbag. The computer doesn't want white to think about this at all. They want white to completely ignore the threat down the king side over here and kick the knight out instead. They want white to go to f4, completely ignoring this, keeping the game even. So like we saw, white pushes their bishop back to try to put some defense, but here comes black. Black put their knight onto the a4 square. That thing is not moving. That thing will guard these two squares until the game ends because there's not really anything it can do uh, to get kicked out of there. Here comes white. White is repositioning. White is trying to backtrack. They're trying to retreat, trying to create a defense now that this h file or this b file is open up rather. Uh, they want to try to create as much defense as possible. White finally realizes they need to kick the knight out. Knight gets kicked back, but here comes black black continues to position uh, their pieces creating a diagonal cutting off the king from this position here putting pressure on this square here and this square here uh, the queen is covering this file in the future uh, and again here comes black's pieces black is lining up a serious attack down the c file with threats with the knight here and the bishop looking down here the king has to try to figure out how to escape here but to escape it could cost three or four moves to reposition this bishop out of here move this queen out of here and then start walking Walking the king out of the way and we don't know if white has the time to do that can white bring it back they are up two pieces of material they have a rook and a pawn for black's knight and a pawn uh, but they are down 1.4 on the eval for king's safety mainly is the reason as to why black is winning on the eval they have these barreling down here uh, but here comes white making the top engine move with the pawn move to g4 black responds with d5 which is an accuracy actually black wanted to sacrifice the knight because after it take take you can't take with this because if you take with that i take with my queen and i infiltrate with my queen this pawn is soon to fall and it's going to be a nightmare for uh white to try to defend but instead of that black pushes loses about half of their advantage is about 8.5 advantage white responds by saying i don't want to take that pawn i want to attack your bishop instead make it push back have you lose that long diagonal that you had before on that pawn there White responds by making a catastrophic play here. Catastrophic because this opens up the, the ability for a double attack. This pawn attacks the queen, but also opens up an attack on this rook here. White makes the correct response by taking the pawn on d4, but black can't get tunnel vision. Black should not take this rook over here. Black needs to instead connect their knights, create some attacking opportunities because after black takes this rook, which is what they did, it is now a dead even game it's a dead even game because after take take black is still supposed to connect these knights here but black doesn't do that instead he makes another catastrophic move by pushing the pawn to b4 again losing the advantage and now white is actually uh, ahead on the eval bar with a 0.1 advantage and still up uh, a, a pawn ladies and gentlemen we come to the final 12 moves white is trying to get onto the counterattack by attacking that diagonal with these pawns right here trying to create a, a pawn storm here black is in control of this file from here on out white's king is forever cut off if we go back a couple moves this was actually an inaccuracy by white white should not have moved their king if anything they should have moved their king over here or taken with this because they needed to create a pawn structure right here, but they don't. White instead gets their pawn taken. Black takes control of this B file, and this is where we stand. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of this game. Black is up two points on the eval bar because they control this B file. King safety is paramount at this point. Black's tucked in here. White is out in the open, stranded on the A file. And watch what happens next. Black unleashes a series 
of brilliant moves and tactics which throws the game completely in his favor and makes Hikaru Nakamura at the time the youngest grandmaster in US history. And ladies and gentlemen, at the age of 15 years old and a couple months, Hikaru Nakamura defeated Michael Moyer to become America's youngest grandmaster at the time. Appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe. And as always, hold the line until next time. Peace.